Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and today we're going to interview Timon Smectala, the Dying Light franchise director. Also during this interview, I've asked him a lot of questions that you guys wanted answers for. So I hope you guys will be satisfied with the answers we have got. Also, this is my first time doing a face cam video, so I'm still learning and at the same time, do let me know if you want to see more of it in the future. Now, let's start with the first question. What can we expect to see in the Tower Raid mode and what are the reasons one should be excited for it? Okay, so uh, uh, of course I cannot reveal everything and I don't want to say all of the details because we're not releasing it yet. Uh, so I think we'll kind of reveal everything around it a little bit closer to the release. Uh, first, maybe I will explain why it took us a little longer than we, we expected to develop it because when we were working on the mode, we realized that we can do more with it than we initially planned. We just, at first, we just wanted to make this like a relatively simple addition to, to, to the game, something on the side that players could uh, enjoy a few times. But when we worked on this, we, on the, on it, we realized that uh, we have tons of good ideas, great ideas uh, that we wanted to check. And we believe that they would benefit the gameplay and make the experience the most um, more interesting and more replayable so 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 that's we that's why we decided to take those few extra months to actually develop it into what we feel could be the full potential of the mode i don't want to kind of spill too many details but i what i can do obviously is a, a description of what the mode is on a very high level so of course it's a tower rate so there's a tower involved you start at the bottom of it and you need to reach the top of it um as you do that there are um, floors along the way that should that gives you some challenges that you have to overcome uh we wanted to make sure that those challenges are varied and and, and, and don't repeat that much so 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 um, um i think it will be surprising and interesting for players throughout the whole to all, all of the playthroughs i'm saying all of the playthroughs because um we are actually using some mechanisms the mechanics that uh, make the mode at least we hope it will make the mode highly replayable, uh, taking inspirations from um, roguelike games, but also games like, I don't know, Payday 2, for example, Payday series generally. So, so there are already quite a few proven mechanics that you can apply to a mode like this to a rate to make it replayable. And we are using part of them, uh, of course, in Dying Light style, Dying Light format to, 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 to make the experience feel a lot like dying light um so yes replayable aimed at co-op players you can play the mode in single player but i think it's more fun and more emergent more rewarding if you play it in in, in co-op uh and i think that's 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 everything i can reveal at this uh, at this moment i know we were super um kind of cloudy when we announced this we didn't we didn't reveal any details so 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 i think this kind of allows you to wrap your head around what the mode could be um it's definitely our next big release for dying light 2 um so 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 something that we have a lot of excitement for but also a lot of hopes for um very soon within a few weeks we'll do closed play tests beta tests of the mode uh, with some of the influencers and some of the some of the community members because we want to see if they really think that the direction we are going to is is the one that they expected maybe they will see some things that we are missing that could be added or changed in the mode um, and after those beta tests we'll just spend some additional weeks on polish and and hopefully we'll be ready to release the mode it's going to be I think it's going to be something rather unique in the history of Dying Light. We never did anything like this in the history of the series. There were missions and, and, and environments that were an inspiration, that were we tested some of the ideas that went into the tower raid, but as a mode, as a replayable, um, co-op oriented, rogue light -ish type of role or mode this is something that never was done uh, in the history of dying light we want to um kind of go, go full on with this experiment and see how it's how it's received by the players awesome you gave us a lot of details to be honest with you <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, 
I forgot that I'm talking with a YouTuber who now takes my words and kind of dissect them into all of those details. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so that's that. So, enjoy. <laughs> Next title coming up, Timon Smektala leaks the deal. Yes. <laughs> Okay, um, let's move on to the next question. Um, what exactly are the community mod support and how will that actually work for the consoles? Uh, so what we want to do with this is we want to allow players not only to work on maps, but also additional types of uh, content that they can add to the game. Uh, so far, we have given players and modders the, the, or creators um, basically the level editor and a bunch of assets that we have used in the game so they can try to create their levels using those assets of course they 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 show infinite creativity putting together things that we never even thought actually make any sense put together but they do that and and the effects are really really amazing but what we want to do with future support of this is to allow players to be able to add meshes textures um, and, uh, other visual variations i don't want to go into details because it's actually quite complex technical task and even though we would like to have players to be able to add everything that they that they, basically every element of the game uh some of them are super super difficult to implement so until we lock down the final list i don't want to to, to reveal all of it but generally that's the idea that players will not only be able to create maps but also add some elements uh, some objects some 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 environments to uh, the editor to make their creations even more complete and uh, we also thinking about being able to do something like for example i don't know you create a street with zombies and you create 20 of those streets and other mod creators can take your street and use it in their creation uh, so, so 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 we don't want we want a lot to allow players not only to work on full maps but also segments of the maps that can be used by other creators um how this will work on consoles uh, well it will depend on the on the exact type of a addition that 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 you could add of course you cannot create those assets those elements on consoles uh, so to be able to add that you need to use a pc um but then we want to allow console players to be able to download some of those creations onto their machines and be able to use them. So for console players, um, it will be just a matter of using existing uh, elements created on PC and on PC you will be able to create all of that. We're also thinking about being able to add not just kind of assets, objects, but also mods. By mods, I mean sets of scripts and and additional elements that make the experience slightly different so of course we'll need to look at all of those uh, mods do they break the game how much they break the game how much we allow players to actually break the game also consoles i think this will be handled by a separate safe file where you can use all of those mods in a safe format without jeopardizing the the health of your original saves but that's generally the direction um i expect some elements of it to be released around the same time when we'll be releasing uh, tower rate so not with this new update that's coming in a few days but like in the next one uh but but that's generally the direction and there's also something that we actually don't see as a one-time release where we'll release those some of those features and and and, and stop working on it this is the direction so we'll keep adding possibilities in this direction as we move forward okay the small uh thing i want to ask in the same question actually the two questions were basically the same you answered both of it but, okay uh, i do want to know if uh the mod support we're talking about will it only apply for custom maps or the base game can also be modded on consoles uh the the goal is to be able to mod the base game as well but uh, using a, s a separate safe um, related only to those to those modifications so you will be able to so that's the idea that we currently have you will be able to copy uh, kind of clone your existing save into a save that you'll be using with a modded version of the game um, 
those two sales will not talk to each other too much, will not exchange data after you made that split. Uh, but at, at any point, you will be able to create a save that you will be using in the modded version of the game. And in the and when you go into the modded version of, of the game, you will be able to activate everything that you download and you will, you, you will find uh, interesting to you. But once again, this is actually super, super complex on the, on the, on the technical side, especially on consoles. So this is the big idea. How much of it will be able to deliver? I don't want to kind of commit and confirm at this, at this moment because, because to be honest, I just don't know. Like we already know some things that are secured, some things that are super difficult. We'll try to solve them. I think we'll like when we, when we know exactly what will be the scope of the initial release of this, we'll, we'll, we'll start talking about details. Awesome. Okay, the next question is, uh, okay, very interesting. Okay. So, where exactly is Story DLC 2? Like, we haven't heard anything about the DLC, and a lot of people were asking if it's even coming out this year or not. Yep. So, uh, so it's actually in a very good place and it's a very similar situation to Tower Rate where uh, we had some ideas at start, of, of course, bigger for DLC to done for Tower Rate, but still we had some, some ideas that started growing as we worked on the, um, uh, on the title. Uh, and now what we plan to release is, is, is bigger than we initially, initially planned. We also changed the direct direction a little bit. So, so, um, I know there were some leaks online, but, but, uh, it's like a lot of it is is uh, obsolete at this stage. Um, I don't want to say much more about DLC 2. I don't want to say when it's going to be released because there will be a time for this announcement. Um, uh, once again, thanks to the community for their patience waiting for this, but I think it will be worth the wait because as I said, it grew up to be something bigger than we than we initially thought. I would also like to use that opportunity to to actually ask the the, the, the community to be a little bit to be under to 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 be understanding that we will not be delivering a lot of the community requests over the next few months because we actually need to focus on tower rates and and DLC two. So uh, the last year was uh, was spent by us del delivering almost directly like note to note on everything that the community was asking for. We still want to do that. We still want to go into this format of cooperation between us and the community but i think uh, but i need to say that the next few months we need to slow this down a little uh, because the, the 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 big two releases that we have on the horizon which is tower rays and dlc this is something that we need to focus with the like all of us need to focus the whole studio needs to focus on that if you want to if you want to deliver projects on the uh, that the community deserves so that that will reach our ambitions for them and and the potentials that those potential that those projects have so so for the next few months we'll we'll, we'll focus on that and i think as i said once again i i, I hope it's going to be worth the wait um tower rate something unique something quite special very replayable and dlc2 something that i think will touch the the hearts and 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 and, and minds of every dying light player out there um so so i'm super excited for both of the projects and and hopefully we'll be able to deliver them uh exactly in line with our vision for for those yeah we're definitely excited to see the beast for sure <laughs> <laughs> all right um so the next question we're also related with the story dlc but you can answer them like in some sentences don't have to be big but, okay um, can we expect to see some brand new like completely unique zombie in the next dlc the, like of course you can expect new enemies maybe that's what i will say all right <laughs> and the final question related to story dlc will it be as big as the following dlc and will we have like vehicles and everything like people love the following <laughs> I, I I know I know people love the following, but I think uh, what I want to say is that actually what I would like for this DLC to be to be kind of looked at as its own thing without any comparison. I think it's 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 interesting enough and strong enough to be treated as something else, something something unique, something something special. And I don't think it it needs those kinds of comparisons. It's going to be a big story DLC, so in this way it is. Uh, similar to the following, but 
once again, the following was 2016. Now we are in 2024. We're having a new DLC for uh, a new addition to 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 the Dying Light franchise, uh, to the Dying Light universe, and and I think it's it will be good to look at it for what it is, uh, and I think it will like I hope it will um, be equally well received as the following was but 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 i don't think it makes sense to make those comparisons it's a different story it's a, a different mechanics it's a different environment it's it's a lot of it is different so 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 of course you can compare which one you like more or 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 or, or most but i hope that this one will be equally as liked as 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 the following as dying light one as as basically everything that we have released so far Awesome. Um, next question is related to the community projects. Like, I'm um, pretty sure you have seen the Renaissance. Of course. Um, there is E3 Definitive and I Am Legion. All these are like the mm -hmm. massive projects from the community. Yep. So what do you think about them in general? It's first of all, it's super, super flattering for us that there are guys out there who are so engaged into our game that they want to use it as a foundation for their for their own creations we are trying to keep in touch with all of those creators um uh we have we have we, we are in contact with the renaissance guys we are with the contact with jason who works on on i am legion um we try to do our best to support each one of those projects um we actually want to, we are if if there is a if there is a uh, it, if it's if it's not loud enough i want to say it loud enough we really want to help and we really want to support those projects so in any way possible if if those creators feel that we can help them somehow then 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 of course they can reach to us and as i said we are in in contact with with those guys um for a developer it's it's really something very interesting to be able to see that you have made your creation you have put it out there on the market and uh, on, on, in players hands and now those players are trying to take it further and maybe in different directions so 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 it's always very very interesting i must say that um uh like all of the all of the projects that you have mentioned is something that i have on my radar for a rather, rather for a uh um uh, quite some time like all of those projects are shaping to be very interesting and i hope all of them will continue developing and in case of project like renaissance i hope that it will see the light of the day and once again if we can help somehow if you can support then then then, then we are very much willing to so 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 hopefully we'll be able to to kind of give that extra push make those projects uh, slightly better with our involvement but of course if the teams behind those projects want to do it by by themselves independently then then then, then also their choice but in general it's uh, super flattering super interesting super exciting for a developer to see what can be done with your own creation when you give it to players when you give we leave it in players hands and now they uh they try to do their own things with it right um yeah. at the same time you know like when these projects are finished especially the renaissance a lot of people want to see that in the base game so, so mm -hmm. you like approaching some of these people when you know their projects are done like is, is there a possibility that we can see them as a small dlc or something once again i think the the um, the big decision the, the 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 big decision behind this is actually not in our hands those are creations by of those teams and uh, and they own those projects in a way so if they are interested in this then then of as i said we are super interested into supporting them uh, we have already talked with Jason regarding uh, making I Legion a part of the official release of Dying Light 2. Uh, it's again, it's it's a project that's uh, very complicated technically, uh, and I know that that uh, perhaps Jason might be a little bit um, disappointed with how often we are able to exchange messages and 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 updates regarding what we do on both sides i i actually hope that we are we will be able to update to 
um, make it work a little bit better. Um, we're just super busy with our own stuff, so it's not always uh, possible to, to, to focus on, on, on such projects. Um, we are talking with the Renaissance guys. There, actually, that we had this idea that maybe this is something that we could use as a more officially as a part of Dying Light 2. Um, but so far, the guys are more interested into going the independent route, which I very much respect and, and, and of course, understand. Um, so the potential is there. But I think that for this to happen, uh, two things need to happen, actually. The first, the, the, the first thing, the first one is a decision on the creator's part that this is something that they want to do that they don't want to to keep the keep those to themselves and make them independent that they want to reach out and and um, uh, work with us more officially and the second one which actually might be more problematic is to solve all of the technical challenges that that, that are coming with this because uh, uh, even though the maps are kind of the same and they worked in dying light 2 the maps that are created with dev tools they require some work to 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 kind of be supported by our game in the same way that the map is that it, we create with our own engine is it because of the engine because both are different there's like a separate public engine that you guys have made the developer tools is completely different it, it's, not, it's not really about the engine it's more about the editor in itself right because right. Uh, the the dev tools editor that we gave to players is a powerful machine it's a powerful tool but it doesn't have all of the functionalities that 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 our let's say official, official. professional for a lack of better words uh has so so i think that's the that's the bigger issue with the with the dev tools engine is a little bit uh, with the dev tools editor is a little bit harder to create maps uh, which are fully compatible with all of the game systems that can be released on consoles etc etc so 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 i think that's the um, biggest tech difficulty uh, again i don't want to go into details because i have said this millions of times i'm not a tech person so 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 i might be missing some of the details but still, if there is a willingness on the on, on both sides, and if there is, uh, then, then I, I'm sure we can solve the technical difficulties. There will be a lot of them. The bigger the map, the more complex it is. The of course the, the difficulties will be bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, but I think that's solvable uh, if there's an intent to, to to do a cooperation like that. Awesome. Um, okay. Next question is regarding. I'm gonna mix two questions here because the. Okay. So uh, basically, is there a, will we ever go back to Haran? And uh, do you guys like have any plans of remastering the original Dying Light with the current C engine? Is there any plan for that? Uh, I don't think there is anything meaningful that I could announce or reveal at this stage. Of course, we have uh, we have um, added Haran assets to the. Uh, development tools so 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 that's a one venue where we can g get back to hire somehow um we are considering quite a few future projects for dying light and 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 of course we are discussing different options but there's nothing really meaningful to talk about right now um so 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 yeah i think i will just stop there at this moment, so far, the, the the best thing that we can count on is the the, the creators themselves that they will use the DevTools editor to to come up with with maps like this. We are also trying to motivate the creator community to 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 create some specific maps that we feel could be interesting for our players, exciting for our players. Um, and I think it would be good to do another round of some kind of motivation to use the Haran assets to to create something maybe even more interesting that was done previously i think the first batch of haran maps was actually super super cool super super interesting so so but i think we can do more especially that the dev tools got updated over the over the over the time so they are a little bit more powerful right now so 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 i think first what we'll do we'll explore this possibility okay um the next question is regarding the upcoming nightmare mode like okay what can we expect from it and why should one be excited for it Mm -hmm. So, of course, Nightmare, uh, Nightmare Mode is something that's aimed toward our most hardcore players. Uh, so, if you just like to have some mindless fun while playing Dying Light, just 
start the game after a long week of work and just bash some zombies. Maybe that's not the mode for you, but if you want that extra challenge, if you want to really feel pressured by zombies, then definitely this is something you should try. Uh, we have used the first game's nightmare mode as a foundation, so, so a lot of the features have been taken from that one, a lot of the ideas have been taken from that one. Uh, so, of course, we have things like a... Um, uh of like obvious things tougher enemies but we didn't want to make them tougher so they like sponges for damage we just want to make them more aggressive and more ferocious and more dangerous so so we looked more at how much dam damage they deal and how they behave than on how much health they have uh i think the when discussing things, this I think is important to mention that we have focused mostly on two types of enemies, is the biters and the volatiles, so basically two ends of, of our infected spectrum. Uh, on biters, because they are everywhere, and if you want to really kind of get get that nightmare feel from every minute, every second of gameplay, you really need to focus on, on biters. What we wanted to do is we wanted to get back to the feeling of the early Dying Light 1, where you just leave the tower first and basically like the, every zombie can kill you like even the, the the regular biter at the beginning of the first game this is the feeling that you don't really want to get close to those guys because they are super dangerous to you so we wanted to make sure that this is the type of feeling that players will have at the beginning of the game but also at the end of the game because i think uh, everyone admits that after you spend i know 50 100 hours 200 hours in dying light 2 you start feeling like this demigod that 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 there's no no challenge uh, in front of you. So you wanted to make sure that even if you that develop, the challenge is there. Uh, on the other hand, we focus on the volatiles because we wanted to make them really kind of fulfill the idea of apex night predators. But every enemy archetype has been changed tweaked and somehow rebalanced for the mode um, uh, we looked also at things like kind of atmosphere and the immersion. So flickering flashlight makes a comeback the same as in dying light one so sometimes it can just fail you in the middle of the night and and it tends to be super scary and dark for a moment and um, we also added some new features so for example um we have changed how the stamina is uh, being uh, managed by you so we have this kind of we call it tactical stamina so it's it uses stamina in a way that's closer to dark souls i don't want to really make that comparison because dark souls is a different type of game and 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 um so it's just a metaphor but i think it it, it kind of tells you so 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 when you use tactical stamina which is in the nightmare mode uh you really need to start caring about each one of the swings you just don't kind of hack and slash mindlessly because because soon you'll be out of stamina and that's super dangerous situation for you to be in uh, we introduced the fifth level of chase where volatile tyrants are chasing you. So there are a bunch of changes that affect every game system to make the experience more difficult. But when we were say, when when we say more difficult, the idea was not to just look at parameters and numbers. So it's super hard to kill anyone. We, what we wanted to do is we wanted to have a mode which changes how players play the game. So uh, for our hardcore players, if you play as you do right now, you see a biter, you just don't care. What we wanted to do, for example, is that when you see a biter, you actually start caring and and you start being more careful and 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 you choose avoid more often than just go in guns blazing. Much it is kind of blazing and and killing everyone. So so those were the directions. I must say this is not a mode for me because I I kind of I have been challenged already in Dying Light. I don't I don't need to be challenged that much. So so. I choose to play on the actually I play on hard but but still I think nightmare that's too much for me uh, but to make sure that the mode meets the expectations of players we have asked some of our influencers and some of our uh, hardcore community members to play test the mode and see what it is and give us feedback which we incorporated basically everything that 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 we received uh, was incorporated was incorporated into the final release which comes live in a few days so 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 um yeah fingers crossed i hope that this will be good of course uh, we are super open to to any suggestions so so if if players have anything to say if they feel that maybe we forgot something missed something hopefully not but or maybe went too far with some of the changes then we are very open to listen to that and maybe do some tweaks here and there to make sure that the challenge is um as they expected awesome looking forward to the nightmare mode definitely um 
What about the game modes, like more game modes, be the zombies, survival mode, tag mode? Like, what kind of game mode would you like to see in Dying Light 2? Actually, all of them. Uh, the thing is that when you, when you, like, when you look at idea in game dev, you need to look at, I, at, at an idea how good it is, but also how costly it is to produce. So uh, when you make a decision which one to choose, it's not always about the most fun, but kind of the the, the perfect balance between how fun it could it could be, but also how costly, how much time it will take you to produce those. Um, I would love to see tag mode, but to be honest, I think that would that would not be something. Um, uh, that will engage our community for uh, long. I think that will be a very cool diversion for some time, but but maybe not something that will really be this thing that people will get back to and play constantly. I, uh, they, of course, there will be people super interested in it, but I don't think this will be super broad. Um, as be the zombie again, something that I think could actually take off very very nicely, but then it's actually very costly to make because like this new enemy, the new control method, the new kind of player skills. So so this is not something that will happen very quickly. Uh, survival mode, I, I think, is the best balance between the how engaging it can be and how much it can impact players returning to the game and how much time it will take us to 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 make so and also this is something that personally i like a lot so so probably out of those three i would choose survival mode um uh, but once again i think where we are currently is we want to kind of phase down and slow down all of the other developments focus on tower rates and then dlc2 um use that time to come up with a proper strategy for the for the future and just choose the project that we that we have on the on the table let's say um and then i think there will be time to discuss modes like this uh, more thoroughly maybe engage community in this and and give them some propositions and see and uh, try to gauge interest which one of those possible directions is the one that 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 would excite people more uh, most um so yeah i think that's the answer but out of those three definitely survival mode is something i would be the most interested in personally i am actually excited for the survival mode like uh, i remember once uh, in an interview i think you mentioned about survival mode and i from that moment i was like that's the best idea and i've been talking about yes. it on my channel yes 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 i think i i think that's that there's a lot of potential there we already have let's say designs for it we already have uh some very good ideas what we could do with this but once again right now the focus is star rates and dlc2 and and only after that we'll get back to like this more um kind of um, rich uh approach to supporting the base game awesome um next question is regarding one of the changes that a lot of people have been asking so you remember the introduction scene when we see the holler for the first time yes <laughs> and you still have a howler screaming instead of actually a volatile mm -hmm. because that thing has been changed now that the volatile started chase. So why hasn't that been changed in the cutscene? Will it will it change in the future? Um I think it needs to be changed in the future. I think this is something that we kinda downplayed the, the importance of it. We we thought to ourselves, okay, but what howlers actually do, they call virals. Uh, in that first scene, you are being chased by virals mostly. You don't see any volatiles, so it kind of makes sense to us not to change it. Uh, but uh, like I keep hearing about this all the time, and and I think this is something that that we should do, especially that we have created this small team of animators that's working on our cutscenes and and upgrades them here and there. So 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 why not this one, right? So so definitely, I think this is something that we should look at. I don't want to kind of confirm we'll do this um but maybe we will and maybe it will be a nice surprise at some point for the for the players definitely we always check the new cutscenes like i always try and replay the game so we can find new cutscenes okay and okay so so okay so i can spoil to you that in the next update which comes like comes live in a few days there will also be some new cutscenes uh so it's up to you if you want to discover them by yourself then then please do if you want to get some kind of a cheat to to uh kind of if you want me to reveal them to you which ones have been tweaked then at some point, like when you when you feel like it, let us know. So I'll try to provide the provide you the list uh, because actually quite a few of them has been changed in this in this new update as well. That'll be good to know. But um, I've actually I actually have four thousand almost four thousand hours in Dying Light. Okay. Play the game. 
again and again multiple times just to see okay. the scenes, try okay. the pictures. Good. Good, good, good. So that's 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 just a proposition. I don't want to spoil the fun for you. Uh, but if at some point you want to see, I don't know, if you missed any any one of those, then let me know and we'll try to provide you with the link. Definitely. Um now with the introduction of firearms in the game, uh, have you guys thought of adding any modif modifications for the firearms like laser sights, extended mags, other elemental effects for bullets, something like that? Yes, of course. Uh, but again, this is like we have a huge list of ideas what we would like to do with firearms, also like craftable ammo, maybe ammo with some additional effects, all of those things. Um, but like nothing to announce at this stage. We, we we are building a base of ideas that we would like to introduce uh, at some point. Um, but as I said, right now the focus is Tower Raids, the focus is DLC2. Um, I don't want to kind of confirm it, but some of the ideas inspired by firearms will appear in one of those projects. Um, not everything that you mentioned, just some kind of firearm related things. Uh, that actually shouldn't be that much of a surprise, but um, but we'll talk details when we'll be closer to releasing those 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 modes, so those projects. So so then it will be easier to see how all of it fits uh, each one of them. Awesome. Uh, next one is my favorite because uh, in the first game we had dockets, and we did get some yeah. dockets for Dying Light 2 as well. And people love collecting dockets. Like we used to get every week a new docket. And everybody loved it. So why can't we have like similar thing for Dying Light too? Uh, that's a good question because actually we can and we are considering uh, going in that direction. Um, so I like I don't again nothing to confirm. I don't want to promise anything. I actually think that uh, it it would be good to maybe add this idea to our community ideas web, uh, website on Pilgrim Outpost, where we want uh, the, 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 the community to vote on possible additions to the game. Uh, and I think if there's an idea for dockets and it's being voted on by the community and it's high on the list, then, then, then that's a no brainer. This is something we can do. So, 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 so. Yeah, let's let's add this to the community ideas. Maybe you, maybe one of your viewers will do that, and then we'll see how how well it fares in the uh, in the community ideas website. All right, I'm gonna put one today. <laughs> good, good. Okay. Um, next question is regarding uh, infected animals. We have um, back in E3 2019, we have an interview where we actually you guys talked about one of the features where you hunt down animals and get uh -huh. their skins, you sell it, and everything. So. Is it a possibility that we might see something like that in future? Uh, I don't want to get you hopes too high with this one because uh, actually creating animals and and um, basically any type of animal that any type of creature that moves on all fours, etc. This is a completely different level in terms of animation compared to 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 let's say a humanoid um yes we had those ideas we are working on some prototypes where we thought we'll be able to deliver those animals to the game but then we understood that actually the quality is not really there um it's also a little bit different because our game is very in your face very direct very up close so it's not even a shooter when you can see an animal somewhere far away from you where you try to where, where you shoot it but you don't really see with details how it moves how it behaves in our game you would have to be super super close uh, so, so so definitely something that's way more complex and, and, and difficult to pull off we don't plan to add those types of animals any types of animals uh, soon that's something I can confirm um, but after the releases that I've mentioned, we'll be getting back to, to what more we can do with Dying Light and, and, and maybe the animals will make the cut. But so far, no one is working on them. They are not planned to be a part of any of our releases. Awesome. We have a few more questions left, two more. Uh, so uh, we'll Maybe just... for like four minutes, so, so we can yeah, go. Yeah, it should be done. It should be easy. Um, so a lot of people, you might have seen this everywhere. Like a lot of people have been asking about the flashlights, like the Dying Light 1 flashlight had you know, every time you turn it on, you see the shadows being casted properly. Yep. So a lot of people are wondering when we are going to see that same thing in Dying Light 2. Like, it, it's not exactly as proper as Dying Light 1 flashlight. Yes, so definitely not much will happen uh, soon. Uh, I am aware of, of, of this uh, request. 
personally, I believe the flashlight and generally the lighting, the the UV light, the how 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 the night looks, how the day looks, basically everything related to lighting should be super good in a dying light game. So 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 definitely this is something that we'll be trying to pull off perfectly in all of our future releases. For dying light two, it would be very hard to actually have the the thing that you mentioned because our dying light to flashlight using uses completely different uh, technology than the dying light one flashlight um i'm not saying it's not doable i'm just saying that it's not something that we are working on right now and want to release very soon um but again maybe another feature that 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 we'll discuss at some point after we release the two projects that we are co currently working on yes the final question is very interesting. You might have heard this a lot of times. So, is Kyle Crane the Night Hunter? Uh, I can't answer that, but it was a great interview. So, thank you for having me and thank you for inviting me. Um, I don't want to say that I think it's good to leave some secrecy there and, and some mystery there. But I'm sure at one point in the in future it will be revealed. So, so we'll get an answer yeah. in future. Also, at the same time, is there a message you want to give to the community? Yeah, so I think that's the message that I'm always giving. So the message is, first of all, I need to thank the community for the support that they're giving us. Um, this is actually something that, in my eyes, this is something that made Dying Light what it is. Dying Light happened and became this big franchise in the gaming world because of the community support so 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 we understand that we have lots of love to give back to our community and we're trying to do that um uh, sometimes we manage to do it better sometimes not so good but but we always trying and and we really do understand that we have a very special um connection with our community so i hope this will never cease and and once again i would like to thank the community for it and as always with our all future releases we are really waiting for your feedback we want to hear from you guys whether you like something or not because this allows us to make the game better so once again thank you and please continue supporting us because this this is this i think this is part of what dying light is it's not only a game but it's a game with a this amazing community uh, that's very much engaged into the game and and, and that's something very special uh, and something that we are really happy that we are a part of so once again thank you from the bottom of my heart so guys that was the whole interview i hope i covered all the important questions in this interview also i tried getting the best ones in since we only had about 30 minutes for the interview but yeah thank you techland for this opportunity and thank you everyone for being this supportive and i guess this is the end of the video and i'll see you guys in my next video till then stay safe and stay human